Okay, it's 11 a.m. now. Let's get started. Uh, is the mic okay? Hello? Uh, okay. Why? Hello? Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, Chong Wu from uh, Litecoin Foundation from Hong Kong. And today I will talk about how to uh, develop Litechain, our own blockchain using the Cosmos SDK. The outline is like this. Uh, first, I will introduce what is Litecoin, what we want to do in Litecoin. Then uh, uh, some history that uh, we try to build Litechain, uh, our blockchain Litechain on Tendermint, and then we switch to uh, build up on Tendermint and Cosmos SDK. And if I, I if I have time, I will provide an, uh, some coding example on uh, how to write a Cosmos module in order to uh, develop your own blockchain. First, uh, Litecoin, what is Litecoin? Litecoin is a to uh, itself is a token. It's already online on Ethereum. It's uh, currently an ERC20 token, but we are planning to move to our own blockchain when, the, when Litechain is finished. And it aims to be the token for the uh, contents. Uh, it, will have, uh, it will have a few components. First is uh, what we call ISCN, which is the uh, similar to ISBN, the book, uh, international standard book numbers. We want to have uh, international standard content numbers to give the content uh, each, to give, give the contents on internet uh, number to reference. And by this number, you can uh, find the contents uh, metadata like the author, uh, description, license, and URL, and etc. Then uh, with this database, we can create a, a great ecosystem. Uh, other applications can use this to, for example, index the contents that uh, for a subscription service. We also want to uh, reward content creators uh, by, their, uh, by their work on creating good contents using, uh, using our Litecoin token. And users can give the token to our users uh, Users can reward the content creators by tipping, and also the system will have reward mechanism. And then content creators and the users who own the tokens can also govern the system uh, by using the tokens to vote for proposals. For example, if they think something, uh, some contents are fake news, disinformation, then they can uh, use the governance mechanism to vote out the content. So uh, together, it, uh, this will form an ecosystem and uh, uh, for the contents, form a sovereignty which uh, content creators then can manage themselves and rule themselves. Uh, we are, light.co is our website. If, if you are interested, you can uh, try to have a look. Uh, we uh, recently, uh, if, you have, uh, if you have noticed, uh, there is a great, uh, great a uh, large political event in uh, Hong Kong. And there are a series of events, and therefore we want to make a proof of concept of ISCN for recording, uh, uh, recording the events on the blockchain. Cur uh, so we made a POC of uh, proof of concept of ISCN using Ethereum and IPFS. Uh, it is called the I612 project. Uh, which is basically the nano wall on blockchain. Uh, 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 anyone can, everyone can stack their contents onto the blockchain to record something related to the event. And it is, uh, will, uh, will it be too small or blur? Anyway, you can scan the QR code to see the uh, current result. And you can see that uh, someone has uploaded this uh, image. And also for the, uh, the metadata, uh, who is the creator of this, uh, photo. Uh, this content is on the blockchain, therefore there is a blockchain transaction record and you can refer to it to for the upload time. And the content, uh, the photo itself is on IPFS so you can see the IPFS address. And the metadata are also recorded into in IPFS and you can refer to say the license, the date created, uh, description, and uh, we have also recorded the uh, content location if the uploader has a uh, provided that. Uh, by the way, it's open source, uh, uh, so we welcome anyone, uh, everyone to contribute. Uh, we, we are trying to improve it. 
So uh, in order to build the Litecoin ecosystem, uh, we need a blockchain. Uh, we want to have our own blockchain because Ethereum is too slow and too many limitations. At first, we try to build it on the uh, a blockchain engine called Tendermint. Tendermint is a blockchain engine which allows user uh, allows developers to separate blockchain consensus logics, which is provided by the engine, and the real application logic. Therefore, the uh, the developer who wants to build a blockchain for his own application can focus on the application logic instead of uh, networking, consensus, uh, proof of stake, these kind of things. So the architecture is like this. Uh, underlying there is the Tendermint engine, which provides networking and consensus layer. And it's com uh, this engine communicates with the uh, application logic uh, we call it the ABCI proxy application. And it communicates with the ABCI application with the uh, with RPC, uh, with TCP. Therefore, uh, anyone can implement the interface that the ABCI defines to uh, to make the application a, a blockchain application. Uh, it says that uh, it can be written in any language, but uh, in practice, it supports uh, Go and Go and JavaScript the most. So our application is written in Go. So uh, we have uh, already written the first version of uh, Lightchain on Tendermint. The architecture is uh, it's like this. Uh, the Tendermint is the core engine, and there is the uh, application. Uh, which implements the ABCI interface. Uh, underlying it uses some other libraries for storage. And we have also implemented some servers uh, together with the blockchain application so that, uh, so that it allows users who are already on Ethereum and have uh, Ethereum Litecoins to exchange, to exchange their Ethereum Litecoin for uh, for uh, the light chain, and also allows the light chain light coins to send to Ethereum. So it's uh, this one is already developed uh, in about I think about April. But we found uh, some problems in this application. Uh, yeah, it's a con first it's a consortium side chain of Ethereum. Uh, so it allows two way exchange between Ethereum and uh, Ethereum and light chain. But we found so, uh, some problems because uh, this version is only a very basic version. Basically, it only has the uh, function of transferring tokens. So uh, we finally, uh, the eventually, we want to be a public chain, and we want we also want to have the governance uh, governance mechanism, which uh, users can vote with their tokens. And these two features are very uh, very crucial uh, crucial features for our for Litecoin, but they are also very complicated to implement. Uh, it's hard to write from scratch and hard to do it right. Therefore, we uh, in, uh, we rewrite it uh, using a co using another approach. Uh, we use the Cosmos SDK to rewrite it. Uh, Cosmos is a project that aims to be the network of blockchains. Uh, uh, it provides a lot of tools for developers to develop their blockchain. Tendermint is one of them. And up on Tender, uh, besides Tendermint, it also uh, uh, provides some SDK called the Cosmos SDK, which includes some common features that uh, common features that a lot of blockchain wants to have. So you uh, developers can easily develop their own blockchain. It also uh, it also defines a protocol for, called uh, inter blockchain communication, so that uh, all the blockchains implementing this protocol can communicate with uh, communicate with each other. Therefore, the blockchain uh, you can write your own blockchain for your own application, and then connect to other blockchains or other blockchains that connect your blockchain to other blockchains called the hubs. Therefore, this call uh, this calls the this makes a network of blockchains. And the 
architecture will be look like this. Uh, there are some hubs which are blockchains that connect other blockchains, and there are also zones which are the block uh, application specific blockchains. So the uh, zones can join to the join to the network by connecting to any hub, and then these all blockchains are interconnected. Uh, Cosmos will also provide some, uh, they call it the PAC zone, which is a bridge to connect uh, blockchains which are outside the ecosystem. Uh, outside the ecosystem. So the Cosmos SDK is one of the com major components in the Cosmos ecosystem. It is a tool that allows you uh, developing framework for developing uh, tendermint based blo uh, blockchains. So it is built on top of Tendermint. It is like the uh, library or, uh, library concept in programming, but it's provided in the blockchain con uh, context. Uh, it provides a lot of uh, common modules like the authentication module called OR, the, uh, token, uh, the token module called BANK, uh, the proof of stake uh, consensus module called uh, staking module, and also provide governance module. So with these modules, uh, developers can now can more focus on their chains uh, uh, unique feature instead of re implementing the token transfer, uh, the proof of stake, etc. So uh, previously, uh, this is still Tendermint, which uh, which is for the consensus and networking. But now we have uh, also have other modules on top of that governance, uh, interblockchain communication, etc. And developers can write all, uh, their own modules and also share their modules so that uh, the others can use these modules to build their blockchain. So the uh, Cosmos SDK architecture is like this. Uh, the upper part is Tendermint, which uh, transfers the transactions to the application. The application has uh, something called the base app, basic application which will decode the transaction into uh, go uh, into go structs, which is uh, user-defined uh, messages. These messages are sent to uh, the corresponding module. When the module receive, uh, say, say the staking module receive a staking message, it will put the message into the message handler, which is like the uh, controller in the MVC architecture. The control, uh, sorry, the handler, okay. The handler uh, then calls, uh, by its application logic, checks the error, and then it calls the staking keeper. The keeper is like the model part in the MVC architecture, uh, which is the, also the core of, the, uh, of each Cosmos SDK module. So these keepers can also, may also refer to other keepers, other modules keepers, for example, if a staking message is about to is about uh, putting ten coins to the staking pool, then it needs to move the coins, and moving the coin is uh, is the call, uh, is the responsibility of the bank module. Therefore, the staking module needs to refer to the bank module. So the staking keeper will refer to the bank keeper to uh, by calling the bank keeper to move the coins, and the keeper will connect to the. Uh, what they call, uh, what is called the stores in the Cosmos SDK, and the stores are the uh, are the storage layer, which defines the whole application stage and uh, serial serialize the whole application. So this is the basic architecture of a uh, Cosmos module. So. Uh, I will go through an example which uh, which was uh, which I wrote in the hackathon event last month. But before that, I want to introduce uh, why we have the why we have that module at the first place. Currently, we have a project called Civil Leica, built up on Litecoin, which a user can subscribe for five US dollar per month. And then these five US dollar are converted to Litecoin, and when the user click on the like buttons, which uh, we put on, uh, we let the content creators to put in their content. When the co when the user click on the like buttons, uh, their five US dollar equivalent Litecoin will be distributed according to uh, 
according to how they click the likes. And you can, you can go to uh, like land, like land slash civic to have more details on this project. And uh, I'm, this is uh, the result of uh, or the reports that user receive uh, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of each day, which uh, saying that your uh, the five US dollar, uh, the monthly five US do US dollar today has been distributed for zero point five US dollar, and zero point two five dollar are to these uh, these two articles and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a daily report. The reason that we have a daily report instead of an instant uh, distribution is that we are currently on Ethereum. And the transaction on Ethereum is uh, actually quite expensive, which, which is why we want to, which is one of the reasons why we want to have light chain. Therefore, to reduce the cost, we aggregate all the uh, light events that, user ha uh, that a user has and then count it and uh, aggregate them for each day instead of instantly. Therefore, in the hackathon event, we want to build a module that uh, distribute the coins, uh, calculate the distribution of the coins, and also do the subscription on chain. Therefore, it can be done nearly instantly uh, as a proof of concept of the Civil Lighter on light chain. Uh, I've written two modules for that. The first is a subscription module, which will, which a user can say that I want to subscribe to channel A, and then by the best definition of channel A, it it will automatically transfer say ten coins to uh, ten coins to the subscription pool per say ten blocks. Another module is the logic of Stephen Liker, which uh, which hooks the subscription subscription module and use the subscription the coins in subscription pool and distributes them when, uh, according to users like at the end of each block instead of at the end of each day. So that the distribution will be nearly instant. And this project, uh, this hackathon, uh, the code of, uh, written in this hackathon is pushed into uh, this, uh, put onto e GitHub, you can refer to it in our project called the Hack Atom So 2019. Okay, uh, Okay. I still have uh, about eight minutes, so I, I will go through the code that, uh, that I've written in the hackathon. You can see the basic uh, architecture of the, of a Cosmos uh, application. First, you have something called application, which aggregates all the modules and defines the, like the entry point of all the, of everything. Uh. Everything, yes. And then uh, the modules are defined in a sub, uh, usually defined in a subfolder called X. I don't know why they choose this name. So it seems very powerful, but okay, it's a convention. Uh, in this, I've defined two modules. Uh, maybe I maybe we only have time to go through the subscription module. Uh, first, we define some entities we use in the in the module. In the subscription module, there are two entities, which are serialized, which will be serialized and stored in the storage. One is the channel definition. Uh, a subscription channel will have its own ID, so the user can refer to the channel by its ID. It will also have uh, has a price, which defines uh, how much coins are transferred into the into the subscription pool every period. And therefore, we also have a period uh, defined in number of blocks. Say the, uh, say the price is 10 coins and the period is 10 blocks, then the user will transfer, auto the blockchain will automatically transfer 10 coins to the, to the subscription pool of that user per 10 blocks. <coughs> Another type is a subscription, which defines a sub uh, user subscription. The subscriber will be the user. And the channel ID will be the which channel is the user subscribing to. Remaining will be the uh, number of coins remains in that user's subscription pool dot for that channel. So the other modules can use these coins to uh, to do other uh, to do the things de 
defined in the, those modules. And the next payment block defines uh, when when will it uh, when will it when will it transfer from user's coin to the subscription pool again. So after having these two entities, we need to have a keeper, which is uh, if you remember that it, it is the like the model in the MVC architecture, which the, uh, is about storage, storing and get uh, reading the entity stored. So the keeper will connect to the bank modules keeper so that it can transfer coins. So it is called a coin keeper. Uh, the store, it has also has the store key which defines which sub part of the storage is, uh, it can uh, it can access. Uh, cook deck is for and cook deck and we will skip that part. Uh, temporarily skip that part. And the hook is something I defined so that uh, other modules can register a hook. Therefore, when there is a subscription or resubscription, the hooks, uh, which are functions, will be called so the, the modules could, could get notified. So the keeper will have uh, something, uh, actually really like the model in the MVC architecture, where it can define, basically get the getter and the setter of all the entities needed. So you can see it has set channel and get channel to set, uh, to register a, cha a subscription channel. Also the get subscription and set subscription. These are the core parts and I've skipped other details. Uh, say the iteration which can iterate all the subscriptions that, that are defined. So the handler, the handler will be the control, uh, like the controller of the module in the in MVC architecture. The handler first uh, check the message type, uh, the subscription message. If it's uh, something that it can handle, then it call the sub handlers. They handle sub uh, handle message subscription. Else it uh, returns error to so the transaction will fail. In the handler, it's uh, do normal checking. They are. Uh, it first try to get the channel ID to see if there is such a channel. If no, then it return error. Then it's uh, it looks for the subscription. If the user has already subscribed for this channel, then it also return error already subscribed. Then it tries to move coins to users uh, from users account to the subscription pool. It first try to sub uh, subtract coins, which calls another keeper, the bank, uh, the coin keeper, which is in the bank module. So this part is delegated to the bank module. And if the bank module says that it cannot uh, decrease user's coin, which means that user uh, does not have enough coin uh, for the subscription, then it also returns error. If uh, if it's dedu uh, deducted the coin, uh, deducted the coin successfully, then it will create a subscription entity and then store it into, uh, and then call the hooks for the subscription to notify other modules for the subscription. And then it will store the, store the subscription in the keeper. And then there's also something called the begin blocker, which is, uh, which is called which is executed in the beginning of each block. In the begin blocker, it will check, uh, iterate through all the subscriptions to check if the subscription is subscription is already uh, expired and need to be renewed. If the subscription is need to be renewed, then it will get the channel information and then do the same things that is done when doing the subscription, which is the subs uh, to subtract the coins deduct the coins from user's account and then move them into the into the subscription pool and then update update the subscription information for next payment block and then uh, and also call the hooks for notifying a new uh, resubscription and finally store the store the subscription uh, newly set subscription well okay I think I have no time left <laughs> so this is the basic architecture of uh, how you will write a 
Cosmos module. Uh, so if you need any reference or resources, you can see the Tendermint document and also the Cosmos document. Uh, the documents are, the quality of the documents are quite good, but uh, they always move the documents to other places. So if you encounter for or not found, you can, uh, maybe you need to try to change the URL a, li a little bit. So that's the end of this uh, talk. Any question on it? So if no question, uh, we will have, uh, uh, by the way, we will have a BOF session on how, uh, on discussion on how blockchains can help fighting fake news and disinformation, uh, which will be held in uh, tomorrow in IB 305. Uh, the time in the uh, the time set uh, set in the book uh, book class is is 2 p.m. But actually, we have uh, updated that to uh, 12 p.m. Okay, thank you.